Hey guys, what is happening and welcome to this video. So in today's video, we are talking about the housing shortage. Does it exist or does it not exist? Because this is something the lamestream media has been conjuring up in both the States and here in Canada. So we're going to dive deep into this. Before we do, please take a second hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in this kind of content. So without further ado, guys, let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome back. So we are just walking along the edge of Calgary. This is the ring road here. I don't know whether you can see, but the Rocky Mountains are over there. In the background, the sun is just going down right now. It's just about sunset. Everybody is whizzing past on their way home from work and everything like that. So I wanted to talk about the housing shortage, guys, because it is a thing that is being spanned by the media here in Canada and in the States too. So does it even exist? Because that is a valid question, isn't it? Um, here in Canada, a lot of people say, you know, you make, there's really nobody who is talking about real estate the way you are in Canada. And a lot of people say the only guy that comes close is a guy called Steve Starsky. Now, Steve Scott Starsky is on Yahoo Finance a lot. He doesn't take a bearish view on real estate, and he is a real estate agent. And I don't agree with a lot of things he says. And one thing that he says all the time is he is talking about immigration. Oh, we've got all these people coming. We've got all these people coming. So that must mean that you know, we have a housing shortage because there's all these people that are coming into the country. We've got a high immigration amount of people that are coming every year. That must mean that there's a housing shortage. Of course, we know that's not the case, guys. And please share this video with anybody that uses the immigration narrative because we, we put this to bed in a previous video, which I'm going to put somewhere over the screen but we're going to do it again because people seem to forget and the thing is immigration you've got immigration numbers 400,000 people whichever they're bringing in right now just take a look at that that's the sun going down that's the rocky mountains right there guys and the sun's just just going behind them but anyway guys when we talk about immigration Everybody is always talking about the amount of people coming, but they never talk about the people leaving. And it's really important when you're talking about the effects on housing that you're talking about net migration because immigration doesn't even really matter. Immigration is irrelevant. If you've got 500,000 people leaving and you've got 400,000 people coming, then there's a deficit there. You're losing more people than are coming. And the thing is, they spin these articles around. And I think it's really to drum up a narrative that is similar to 2008, but prior to 2008 in the US, where the blame was placed on immigrants. And, you know, in the big short, a movie that you just have to watch because it pretty much encapsulates what's happening in Canada right now to a T. In that movie, they say that it was immigrants and poor people that were blamed. And that is exactly right. It was immigrants and poor people that were being blamed. And do you think it's going to be any different when we have that same bubble right now here in Canada? It's not going to be. It's going to be exactly the same. So what do I expect to see? What do I expect to happen? One thing is for certain that we are going to see these groups be blamed for everything that's happened. I mean, how easy after you've spun the narrative that immigration is causing the housing bubble to then spin it and say, OK, um, it was also all the immigrants that were doing these subprime loans. 
And one thing I really want to get across in this video as well, yeah, and I'm going to leave a link in the description, is when we talk about dwellings per thousand people, that takes into account the amount of people leaving and the amount of people coming. Now the thing is guys, when you really think of dwellings per thousand people, because it takes into account both, it's really the most accurate way of saying how many houses you have. So if you look at it in both Canada and the US, you will see that dwelling per thousand people has been increasing in Canada. So that means despite the amount of people that are coming into the country, we are still building more homes than we need. And a lot of what's happening is it's just being covered up by the lamestream media that there is a speculation frenzy going on right now. And when people have lots of equity in their homes, we've seen this dramatic run up in prices here in Canada. Canada has less unoccupied homes than the US does. We've seen higher run ups here in Canada than the US saw. And on top of that, we have more dwellings per thousand people than the US does as well. So we're building more. So the thing is, there's no housing shortage, and I hope you got that. There's a link below, you can go check historical data and you can see for yourself and I encourage you to do so. But the one big thing, the elephant in the room, nobody wants to talk about it, but it is the big thing that is causing this, is home equity lines of credit. And We've, we've gone into this in the fraud video, which if you haven't seen, go and watch because there's two of them now and they are absolutely kicking butt here on YouTube. Everybody is watching that because they just can't believe what's going on. I think that's why the videos are doing so well. They just cannot believe it. So home equity lines of credit are being used. They're, people are leveraging their home equity to go and buy other homes. Now, in a typical economic cycle that might not necessarily be a bad thing as an investor myself i i totally am aware of that but the thing is we're in a precarious time right now in the economic cycle where we don't really know what's going to happen next nobody does and it looks like we're going to head into a period of monetary tightening where we're going to have interest rates arising and we're also going to have um, QE that, that's ending and it's ended here in Canada but it's, it's being tapered in the US. But the thing is, interestingly enough, that I want to highlight with all this and we're going to be talking about this in another video, I don't know when I'm going to be able to do it, um, about demand circles. I'm calling this thing demand circles. It's something I've made up, I've come up with. It's a Luke original idea and it's going to be a good video. It's going to be a good video for you to share with people because I'm sure all my subscribers, you are really intelligent. I know that from the comments. I reply and speak to you guys all the time that you probably already know this about, about demand. But anyway, it's going, to be, it's going to be interesting to go watch that. But the thing that I want you to really take note of is, uh, is how people are going to react because you've got right now this precarious place where we are in the economy where you know the stock market dropped like a knife and uh, it dropped a thousand points at one point on Friday. It was the worst Black Friday sell-off since the Great Depression. We had the worst day for crude oil or gasoline futures since 2009. So right then it's pointing to Great Depression 2009 and as we've heard for the past year or two now is the biggest increases in home prices since 2008, the biggest sales volumes since 2008, since 2007, since pre-GFC. Well right now people refuse to believe that we are completely pre-GFC right now. So it's coming, we don't know when, it's very hard to predict these things. Even Dr. Michael Burry, who is absolutely fantastic and he managed to get in there and short the housing market, even he couldn't predict 
exactly when it's going to happen. And it's not a popular opinion to take either. And I just want to remind you of that because when you talk to your family, family members and friends, they're going to dismiss it. Most people just point to the, to the one thing which I just find incredible, which is the fact that people have been predicting this for a long time so it won't happen. Whereas it's actually the other way around. The longer this goes on for, the worse it gets. And not only that, the higher probability of it collapsing. It's, it's all about debt service ratios and income levels. And when you've got debt levels that are going way further than income levels, it just only works for so long. It only works if this continues. Even if it goes flat, it will just lead to it declining. And we're, just, we're gonna discuss that in another video too. So anyway, guys, if you haven't already done so, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in this kind of content. And I will see you in the next video. Take care as always. Peace and love. Bye-bye.